In the last episode, you would have seen us excitedly collecting Ultradash, our Leopard 50 catamaran, and starting out on the fit-out and provisioning processes. In this episode, we finally leave the USA to cross the hazardous Gulf Stream and have our first experiences of the pristine beaches, turquoise blue waters, and the interesting heritage of the Bahama Islands. channel and making our crossing across the treacherous Gulf Stream into the Bahamas so it's very exciting and it's something that John and I have been dreaming about for the longest time and anybody that knows us knows that this has been one of our long-term dreams to buy this beautiful boat Ultra Dash we've spent the last couple of months fitting it out getting it ready for um, to take it away and now we're at that moment and in a few hours we're going to be picking up the hook we're going to be going out of the channel there's a big bridge that's got to open up for us and then once we're out of the channel we'll be making our way across the gulf stream now the thing with the gulf stream is the gulf stream absolutely screams south so the point is that you don't want winds coming from the north and the Gulf Stream's going south because what that happens is it actually makes the waves stand up and it makes it really difficult and it can be quite treacherous to do that. So there's a really small weather window that you just have to wait for and you have to wait for the, the, uh, the seas to be calm and for also for the winds to come from south or it's either southeast or southwest, southwest or southeast and um, so that you can either make your way across to Bimini or make your way across up further, which is a little bit further, to West End. So at this point in time, we're going straight across to Bimini. That's where the winds are most favorable, we feel. If uh, we're pushing too much current across the Gulf Stream, then we'll just ta change tack and we'll go up and we'll check in at West End, which will take us probably about 12 hours. It might take us a little more. So we're all ready to go. Apart from John, he's still <laughs> running around in town trying to get the phone to work. Um, so that's a whole other story, which I'll share with you. But anyway, for now, I just wanted to take this moment, share what's going on and um, let everyone know that we're just about ready to cross. So. So we'll see you on the other side. Bye for now. So guys, I'm going to pick up uh, John and Jimmy that have been in town. And I just wanted to share with you how beautiful and calm it is tonight. It's just, I don't know if you can see it, but theres it's just glassy and there's a, just a gorgeous reflection on the water. I'm Wilma, and this is my husband, Jim, and we live in Fort Pierce, Florida. Mm -hmm. we, I've been sailing since I was a teenager, and uh, I thought this was a great opportunity to see the Bahamas on a gorgeous boat. Um, and a shakedown cruise is always fun because you never know what to expect mm -hmm. um, and what needs to be repaired or fixed along the way. Actually. This is a dream of yours since the day I met you 28 years ago. You've been talking about sailing away. <laughs> yep. And this is... On a catamaran. Right. So we're getting a taste of it. 
thank goodness, through these lovely people, John and Elizabeth. Okay, folks, well, we are on our way to the Bahamas. And here we are at the last bridge that we have to get through before we can get out into the open ocean. It's absolutely beautiful here. People have got their Christmas lights. As we make our way through the bridge. So the bridge has to lift. So I'm not sure how clear you can see it. The wind has been fluctuating from too hard on the nose to sail to about 40 degrees, 40, 50 degrees, and, and it's really annoying because you go for a little while thinking, we can get the sail up, we can get the sail up, and then it veers back on the nose, and you know that the jib's just going to be flapping away, but now we've got it about 50 degrees, <coughs> so it's actually looking like it's pulling pretty well. We've got an extra knot. An extra That's fantastic. An extra knot is fantastic. Well, that was six. Because yeah. we, we're pushing about three knots of uh, Gulf Stream current. So, you know, if we can go from five and a half knots to six and a half knots in a, with a three knot current against us, so I reckon our, through the water boat speed is about nine knots or nine and a half knots. It certainly looks really fast out the stern, but an extra knot on that is like, I don't know, 20%, 15%. This yeah. is quite significant. Mm -hmm. So can you tell us about, tell us about the red light first off? Because I feel like I'm in a red light district. Yeah, well that's, I just have the red light so I can get you to do a little <laughs> routine for us. And I'm sure that'd look really good. <laughs> this is a family show, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> so why the red light? Come on. Ah, okay. So um, it's just so it doesn't uh, ruin your night vision. So the red light doesn't uh, constrict your pupils. So when you're looking out into the darkness, you can still see. So it works really well. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I actually don't. I, I usually turn it off, but it's needed on then for the uh, sail. Yeah. To raise this, to pull the sail out. All right. Can you explain about this? Look at this mess. What's all that about? Well, see, there's Fort Lauderdale, where we left from. Uh, there's a Hollywood in in Florida, but that's Fort Lauderdale, that's our track. This is Bimini, where we're going to, so we're two-thirds of the way done now. Uh, but you can see how we've been pushed, even though we're heading quite a long way south, we're being pushed um, to the north by the Gulf Stream, which is exactly what you expect. And I had been, the wind has been due to shift progressively through the night, um, to the west, so I was expecting to be able to go almost due east and then catch the 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 wind on the beam, but it hasn't really, it's really been more from this angle and now it's only kind of from the due south, so it's not really as as cooperative as it was meant to be, but hey, that's life. Yeah, and what, what are all these little dots? Just explain oh, okay. to everyone what they are. So, oops, gives you the depths. So that's us, the catamaran, because the, the uh, device knows we're a catamaran. But these other things are ships. So this is the AIS telling us there's a ship there called a tanker called Madison. And it tells you what direction they're going in and whether you're going to hit them. This is a, a gas um, ship called Moran Gas Sparta. It's going at 17 knots away from us. This one's going at, and it tells you the speed's great stuff, isn't it? 9.2 knots coming towards us, but it'll go behind us. And this device also tells you if you're going to have a, uh, if you're on a collision course. A couple of ships here that are, are going away from us as well. So it's relatively quiet. And um, of course, AIS 
um, anyone with an AIS can pick up us, so yeah. they can see that that we're in their path as well. So we appear on their screen. Yeah, yeah. and and if um, if you want to follow where we are, you can actually look us up on a on a worldwide on your on your computer. We will be registered with an AIS, and you put in a search for Ultra Dash. It will show you where we are on a, a live basis. So. So we can't hide from you. <laughs> <laughs> so AIS a really good safety device, better even than radar. But radar has its place too. AIS gives you more information about what's there, where they're traveling, and and if they are ships or if they just shadows on the radar. We will be there in the morning. At least that will, that's what we think anyway. <laughs> What's he doing, Jimmy? Putting up the quarantine flag. Okay, so that what goes up until we clear customs, and then after we clear customs, we'll replace that quarantine flag with the Dominion uh, flag. which is great and we're really excited to be here in the Bahamas under sail, under sail. and look at that forest. look at that the leopard stars look really nice too the square top main uh, drives the boat really well so like we have very little wind we're pushing the current we're still getting good we're still getting good speeds up the boat so that's nice so we're very very happy with the boat, very pleased to be here and can't wait to start our new adventure. Now we're celebrating with a passage coffee. <laughs> <laughs> well it is six o'clock in the morning, so I think a passage beer would be a little bit OTT. Uh -huh. So customs, customs don't get hassled if I don't go to them first. If I come to you. Browns Marina. All right, folks. So <laughs> here we are in Bimini at the beautiful, in the beautiful Bahamas. And have you ever seen water so ridiculously blue? It's just amazing. It's a shame because obviously because of COVID and you know hurricanes and things like that the places aren't humming like they usually are but um, it's still beautiful it's absolutely beautiful so at the moment John's in at uh, customs and getting us processed so that we can then 
cruise uh, the, the Bahamas and we're legal and we're allowed to fish and do all sorts of things as well. So he's doing that at the moment for the four of us and only the captain can go to shore at the moment. Everybody else has to stay on board. Pretty cool spot to stay. Check out the fish. at Brands Marina at um, Bimini and um, we're on the end of the pontoon it's a secured marina with a code and I've got to do the walk up to first of all immigration and then um, customs apparently so immigration is up here on the left Let's see what happens the first car that passed me had blaring Rasta music wonderful guy driving away in the car really cool so let's see how easy or difficult this is going to be in the middle of the covid thing Arms customs building the yellow building i've heard so much about i hope it's open but we'll see so this is the immigration office and the police station together and to find your way in there's very little signage but here you go corridor with no signs that is it in fact customs had relocated and they were in the big game marina and resort and they sorted out the ultra dash paperwork including a fishing license for the four people it all cost six hundred and twenty dollars and although there was multiple forms to fill out in triplicate the process was very simple and we are officially in the bahamas so just meandering through the town of Alice. And having a look at the palm trees, the beach, <coughs> the water. It's very beautiful. Look at all these conch shells used as decoration for this fence. Bimini has so much mystery and intrigue from being square in the Bermuda Triangle and a place to find the Fountain of Youth and a lost civilization underwater. So this is the old Hemingway's place which burnt down and locals telling us all about Hemingway's and, and then it was turned into this big party joint and one of our friends was telling us who came here about 30 years ago. <laughs> Come on, let me get down. Bridge between human and dolphin consciousness. That's what the art is all about. Hey, Mike. Hi. Karen Ironworks Company of Scotland. A short range, short barrel naval cannon. Of course, this is the Bahamian National Treasure. Hopefully, that's correct and not just a sales pitch. The character. Interesting combination of use of whatever I think came to hand. Tiles, shells, broken mosaics, paint, and 
it seems like we're just continuing to go upwards. Thanks for coming along on our journey to the beautiful Bahamas and to be notified for the next part of the journey, like and subscribe and ding the bell so you can come barefoot with us. Love and health to you all.